Welcome back. Today I am going to give you a quick recap for a movie named, Brawl in Cell Block 99. Bradley Thomas works in an auto repair shop. As his boss called him into his office, he sensed some bad news. The boss fires him as their business is going down, they do not have enough money to pay the workers. He takes his stuff from the locker and is ready to go home when one of his co-workers reaches out to him, telling him about his comeback. With a depressed face, he returns home and sees his wife sitting in the car next to the house. He tells his wife, Lauren, that he got fired. When he talks to her, he finds out that his wife has an affair. After hearing this, he gets outrageous, demanding his wife get inside the house. Before going inside the house, she apologizes to him, but this does not overcome his anger, and he breaks her car by punching the windows. He throws different parts of the car away from the house. This injures his hand, which starts bleeding. After destroying the car, he goes inside to talk to his wife, who was ready to leave the house. He inquired about her affair, which was three months long, but she was not serious about that person. She was sad because Bradley came home late and didn't give her time, so she turned to someone else. There was no communication between them. Bradley says he was working day and night to stay clear and never wanted things to go that way. He apologizes to her, offering a new start and trying to have another baby. The discussion turns to a job, and Bradley shows a willingness to work as a drug delivery boy, which surprises his wife Lauren, but she agrees. 18 months later, he is now working as a drug delivery man. He earned a lot of money after delivering some drug packages. He abandons his car in the woods. Bradley and a now pregnant Lauren have adjusted to a better life. He bought a new house and prepared a room for their daughter. She works alone in the house and asks Bradley to take leave from his job for a few months to take care of her. He was spending time with his wife when he received a call from Gil about some work. He arrives at Gil's house and meets his daughter upstairs, who takes him to the basement where Gil is playing snooker. Gil talks to him about his baby's delivery. Gil then introduces him to Eliezer, a new business associate, with picking up a package of crystal meth with two of Eliezer's men. This deal will give Gil a chance to become a partner with Eliezer. Bradley distrusts one of Eliezer's henchmen, Roman, as he thinks he is using them. Eliezer assures him that his men are clear as he tests his men. Eliezer finds him reliable that he accepts the job when Gil discusses the matter with him and offers him three months paternity leave. At night, he spends time with his wife before leaving. During the job, Bradley does not trust Roman and checks him for weapons. They enter the ship and bring a trunk from underwater, which contains bags with drugs. Bradley senses something bad and throws his bag into the water. He asks the other two to do the same, but they beat him. Suddenly, Bradley realizes it is a police trap and orders Eliezer's men to ditch the drugs. However, Eliezer's men ignore him and exchange fire with the police. Bradley is hesitant and attacks Eliezer's men, one man is fatally shot by the police, while Roman is incapacitated by Bradley. The police detain Bradley alive. Detective Lawrence visits him and asks him to give the names of other associates involved in drug trafficking, but he is unwilling to give out names. He lied about working alone and buying drugs from a person whose name he forgot. The officer tries to convince him by telling him he has a moral compass as he killed his partners and saved the police, but that does not affect Bradley. Bradley is ready to take the punishment instead of revealing names. Before leaving the room, the detective reminds him about his wife's pregnancy and delivery. Lauren visits him in prison and brings food and new clothes for him. He gives her some instructions, such as that she will not attend hearings, which surprises Lauren because she wants to be there as a supportive wife. He requests her, as it will be difficult for him to see his wife and unborn daughter in tough situations. He wants her to rest and take care of herself and their daughter. He also does not want her to bring her daughter to prison when she is born. She becomes upset and cries, but she promises him she will stay loyal to him and will never repeat the mistake of seeing anyone else. Next in court, Bradley is sentenced to seven years in a medium security prison. He is taken to prison, where he has to follow the instructions to reach the prison room safely. He submits his belongings to the checking room. The man at the desk wants him to take his ring because jewelry is not allowed in the prison. 
After some argument, he takes off his ring, puts it in the box, and closes the box with force, which makes the officer angry, and he sends him to the end of the line. He again arrives at the desk, and this time he shows civilized behavior, which is appreciated by the officer. The next step was an inspection of the full body and mouth. After that, he meets Lefty, who is in charge of his orientation. He gives him all the information about the prison and his stay. He has a private room, which is small, but at least private. Bradley tells him about the crime he committed. Lefty takes him to the fourth floor, where his room is. Before entering the room, the officer there gives all the details about his routine. After entering the room, he punches the windows and walls to overcome his anger. He removes his shoe and sees a bleeding foot. He lays down to get some sleep. In the evening, he hears a buzz and some voices outside the room. An officer was ordering everyone to get out of the rooms and make a line. The officer is angry at him for delaying his entry, but Bradley is not taking him seriously. Everyone returns to their rooms after checking in. It becomes difficult for Bradley to pass the time in his room. Lauren was sleeping when she heard some sounds at the door. She locks the door and takes the gun. She shoots at the door and window, but someone shoots sleeping poison at her face, which makes her lose consciousness. These were Eliezer's men who kidnapped Lauren. In prison, Bradley wakes up in the morning and realizes that eight days have passed. He meets Lefty and says thanks for the candy he gave him last night. He will work in the industry inside the prison. Lefty gives him instructions on how to stay respectful at work. He also informs him about Denise Pother who is a nice lady. He meets Denise Pother to discuss his assignments. She asks him about his first day at the prison. She informs him he has a visitor, Dr. Pommen, who wants to discuss some complications in his wife's pregnancy with him. He gets upset after hearing this. He returns to his cell and waits for his call. He goes to see a visitor, finds out that he is not a doctor, and questions him about his identity. He finds out that he is visited by the Placid Man, a henchman for Eliezer. He shows him the picture of his wife, who is tied to the chair. The Placid Man commands Bradley to assassinate an inmate, Christopher Bridge, who is held in cell block 99 at Redleaf, a maximum security prison. If Bradley refuses, he is told that terrible things will happen to his wife and unborn child. The limbs of his unborn child will be surgically removed and sent to him. Bradley reluctantly accepts the offer because he has no other choice. Bradley thus fights his way through prisoners and guards alike to get transferred to the titular cell Block 99. In the van, the guards talk about the Redleaf cell, which is very dangerous. They try to scare Bradley, but he does not care. On arriving at the Redleaf prison, he sees the in charge of the prison meat guards and inquire about him and the guards he has beaten. His belongings are thrown away by Tug and he is provided with a new uniform. One guard inspected him at the door. As he enters the cell, he learns this block is a living hell, where the very worst prisoners are sent to be tortured and live in cells littered with filth and broken glass. After his inspection, he is transferred to his room, which is smelly. He did not eat lunch because of the smell. In the evening, he is taken to the yard, where he meets Derek, another prisoner. He sees some guys working out and wants to work out, but Derek stops him from going near those guys. He then questions him about Christopher Bridge, but Derek has never heard of any guy named Christopher. He then finds out that the group that works out is isolated from the rest of the prison because of their heinous crimes, and they are sentenced to death. He learns that cell block 99 is for society's most despised criminals. Bradley starts a fight with other prisoners to be reassigned to cell block 99. He also beats some guards when they were trying to take him to his room. He is sent to cell block 99, which is a prison within a prison. The officer tied him with a belt that gave remote-controlled electric shocks. He is taken to a room whose floor is covered with broken glasses. The detention officer presses the button, which makes Bradley fall on the floor, and some of the glass pieces injure his hand and legs. After some time, he calls Christopher Bridge from his cell room and learns the truth that there is no Christopher Bridge in the cell. Eliezer's men arrive at the basement where Lauren is kept. He takes some more pictures of her, scaring her. 
She asks him about another person and the placid man tells her he brought an abortionist from Korea who will abort her baby. Lauren cries and requests that he not do that with her baby girl, but he does not care. During the night, a red leaf guard escorts Bradley to another cell where Eliezer and his gang, including Roman, are held. He finds out that he was tricked into getting himself sent to cell block 99, so Eliezer feels Bradley double-crossed him, and due to him, his sister lost her husband. He sent him to prison 99 so he could torture him personally. They intend to torture Bradley for their amusement throughout his incarceration at Redleaf. He requests Eliezer leave his wife, and they will settle. Eliezer shows him the recent pictures of his wife and warns him that if he harms him or his associates, he will call his men to start the abortion. Eliezer's gang beats him, and Eliezer gives him shocks with a remote in his hand. Bradley lost his consciousness and was taken back to his cell. He wakes up in the morning, has his lunch, and meets another prisoner from the cell window. They talk about their lives and loved ones. At night, he is again taken to another cell where Eliezer and his gang are held. On the way, he fights with the guard and asks for the keys to his handcuffs. He gets rid of handcuffs and belts. He then fights with Eliezer's men and brutally kills all of them one by one. Eliezer gets scared and calls the doctor to carry out Eliezer's threat and harm Bradley's unborn child if he doesn't receive a call from him in 10 minutes. Eliezer asks Bradley to go back to his cell, otherwise, his wife and child will die. Bradley asks Eliezer to call off his guy, but Eliezer doesn't listen to him. He tortures Eliezer until he calls off the operation. Bradley takes Wilson and Eliezer into his room when Tug arrives. He requests he call him sometime, as he has to receive a phone call. The placid man and the doctor follow Eliezer's orders and drive Lauren unharmed to Gil's house. As they drive away, Gil retrieves a hidden rifle and kills the placid man Lauren takes the rifle and shoots the doctor. Gil phones Bradley to inform him that his family is finally safe, and Bradley speaks to Lauren about their unborn child and gives some wishes to his daughter. Bradley cries while talking to her wife. He then goes to Eliezer in his cell. Eliezer tries to explain everything to him, but he beats him and kills him. Tugs and his guards emerge and see Eliezer's body on the floor. Bradley remembers that 78 days are left, but Tugs puts them on his head and shoots Bradley. Bradley dies and falls to the ground. Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe.